I got here. I have got the escapement and balance from a carriage clock. C-A-R-R-I-A-G-E. Had to figure out how to spell that. Anyway, <coughs> I have a uh, colleague here that's uh, had an issue with this carriage clock. And the issue was that this escapement here, pallet forks on the inside, the pivot is broken off this. So I think I'm the only guy around that can replace these pivots. So we're going to try to do that today. Um, it's a tough job, I think. Uh, but as you can see, it's a nice a nice carriage clock. And the balance is there. i got to remove this balance to get this out because the pinion on the bottom is really long. So if you look at that, that is the length of this pinion. It's the world's longest pinion. So that, that is not easy. There you go. There's a picture of that pinion. So, so I've got to take this out here and then uh, I'm going to have to use my collets and size this properly to grab that pinion in order to spin this. Uh, to drill that hole to repivot it, so it's going to be a tough little job here. So, but the first thing I got to do is I is make sure this is supported properly. So, this is um, this is how I intend to support this. Uh, make sure that fits in there. I just happen to have a nice hole in there that makes it fit nicely, and then very carefully take out the uh, screw here for the balance. And I may have to use Rodico to pull this out, I'm not sure. I've never worked on a carriage clock movement before, but I seem to be the dude around that does hole drilling now. So, <laughs> so there you go. I also have the, the, uh, the cock, I'll call it, like a balance cock, that I used for the, um, that goes over this. So, because I want to be able to measure the hole size here um, for the pivot to see how big a pivot I'm looking at, right? And one of them here is for the pallet fork, that one there. And then the other one, let me get my, my my screwdriver here. So this would be the one for the pallet fork, and this would be the one um, for the escapement. And and I know that because these two jobby doohickey knobby thing a thingamajiggies uh, go into these holes right here, here and here. So it goes like this. So this is the hole that I need to measure. Uh, to determine the pivot size. So I will do that with pin gauges and, and that's before setting up this on the lathe to drill it out. I thought I might have this part, which I might, but I don't have the full part with the uh, pinion going all the way down. So, so the first thing I want to do is take this balance out nice and carefully. And I've got my uh, balance holder here that I'm hoping will work for this. So I just get my my tweezers in here. This is a little bit tight. It wasn't tight before, but it seems a little tight. So I'm just going to go in here and see if I can move this up a bit because I want to be able to pull this up straight up. Uh, I'm going to make sure there's nothing going wrong on the other side here because you got to be very careful with this stuff. There we go. All right. So it seems to be a little loose. I was actually hoping I could just lift it right up. That way I don't have to worry about my tweezers on the inside. There we go. So that's lifting up here. And then there we go. So that's the balance. And I'll see if, will it fit in here? Not sure. Uh, it does. So that's perfect. So now that balance can just rest here. And I'm not worried about it, but like every watchmaker, make sure stuff is out of the way. So I can put this in here like that. And then I've got a bunch of screws that came with this, right? That I this these are the screws that were used to hold the carriage the uh, the, the part in place. That's that's the screw for the for the the cock that goes over the uh, pallet fork and the um, and the uh, escapement. So, just making sure everything is out, out of the way. So there we go. That's out of the way there. And then very carefully, if I can lift this pallet fork out of the way, that'd be nice too. There we go. And that's now out of the way. I'm looking at that, and it looks like it's in okay condition. And now i got to remove the part I'm going to be working on. 
very carefully. I may want to just dump this out so I don't have to pick it up from any point. So I'm just going to dump this into my hand, right? And see if that works. Yeah, there we go. So I dump that into my hand and I'll just show you what that part looks like now. So this is what it looks like. That's the part. Um, and as you can see, I'll just zoom in a little bit here. This is my zooming in. I just push down. I need to dust my mat, man. It's dirty. So there's what it looks like there. That's the pivot for the other side, and that's pretty big. That's not a small pivot. And that would go down through there and fit into that hole on the bottom, right? Bottom. There is a picture of that hole on the bottom, right? And then um, I'll see if I can clean any of that up too. Um, there's the bottom one. I'll have a look at that um, with my magnifying glass to see if that hole is nice too. Uh, but it should, it perhaps will do. There we go. I'll just put my fingers in there. Um, and I'll just put this aside too very carefully because I don't want this to get ruined in any way. And there's my problem right there. There's the, uh, there it is there. So I think that this is probably steaked, uh, staked onto the pinion. So I've got to make a, uh, a pivot on the end there. And I've got to figure out how big that pivot is going to be. So I asked the gentleman for the, uh, for the, the plate here so I could test fit it as I'm, as I'm working on it, right? But the, uh, f I just make sure that when I use the, the, uh, my wire that I don't have to use wire that's too big. Plus, plus I want to make sure that the drill bit I'm using isn't too small for this. So I've got a drill bit here that I've fashioned and tapered. So I may have to fashion and taper another one. So this drill bit was for a different job. And maybe it's the right size for this. Maybe I've got to go smaller. And if i got to go smaller, I could have a problem. I don't know. Because it's uh, pretty freaking small. So I'll have a look at that as well. And I'll set all that up so, it's, uh, so I can figure this problem out properly. Quick watch check. I've got my Hamilton Interstellar. All right, all right, all right. So that's the Hamilton Interstellar watch given to me as a gift. Beautiful watch, beautiful movement. Um, and here's what it looks like up close. The Hamilton Interstellar. That is beautiful. It was made. It's a. It is a World War II. It was made. It's not. It's a new watch, but it was a World War II vintage uh, pilot's watch, right? So. So, uh, and they were uh, made like this, and this is a beautiful watch. I think I made a video on it before, but you see how those numbers just pop out all of a sudden? That's because each one of these numbers has a little roof on it, a whole bunch of uh, graved roofs on them that reflect the light a certain way. So the numbers at some point just pop out. They pop like that. So very nice watch, pilot's watch. Of, of, I think they're called Fliegers. It was a Flieger watch, so this is the one I'm wearing today. This one has got, this one has got a power reserve around 80 hours, I think, maybe more, but around 80 hours. So you can wear this, take it off on a Friday, put it back on on a Monday and it's still running. So that's what's cool. So they took a 28.8 movement and they make it run at uh, 21.6, which gives them the extra, the extra duration. So a little bit longer mainspring and away you go, right? So that's the story. And I'm sticking with it. So the first thing I have to do, or first thing I'm going to do here, is look at just look at that drill bit and see how it compares to the size of that uh, shaft on this part. So if it's too big, then I may have a different problem altogether. It may not be drillable. Um, I don't know. If it's not drillable, that's a whole other problem. So I'm going to get deep and dirty here and see what I got. And you know what? That's pretty friggin' small. Yeah, this might, this may cause a problem because my drill bit is actually too big to drill this hole. As I'm looking at it here, I'm looking at the drill bit here, and it looks like it's It's ever so slightly too big, I'm not sure. So I'm going to look at that and see if I got a smaller drill bit. I don't think I do. 
So in these circuit board drill bits that I use, this is the smallest drill bit, the pink drill bit. And so I'm going to pull out the pink one here. And I believe it's the same size as the drill bit I have down there. So I may have an issue here drilling this part. I don't know because it's so friggin small. Um, it may not be drillable. Which is a shame because I was told this was a clock part. So to look at this and then look at this and see if that's the same size. Same size, I'm hoping here. So I'll get in close here and then look at this drill bit. No, you know what? This drill bit is just a bit smaller than the other one. So I may be able to drill the hole. This is crazy small though. So I look at this one, this might have been a red one, right? Because this is a slightly bigger. And yeah, so I may have to, I may be able to drill a hole, but the problem I have right now is that the, um, I have to take this drill bit now and put it in a grinder and taper the end here so it fits into, I got to cut it off just like I did this one here, right? At basically the same distance. Right, and then I've got to taper it to an M MT or MT3 taper to fit into my other jobby doohickey thingamajiggy that would be used. So yeah, so I think that might have been a red one. Let me look at the red one here and see if that's the same size. Let me look at the red one, not the red one. Yeah, you know what? It was a red one. So lucky day, lucky day. So I can take the smallest drill bit in the world and use that. So this is a, it's gonna be fun, challenging. Now I can't remember whether I squared the drill bit off on this. I think I might've just left it as a drill bit maybe. Or did I square it off? Let me have a look at the other drill bit and make sure that that's doing what I think it's doing here. Yeah, I worry about these drill bits because they can crack off and when they crack off, they go inside the part. And this one here is barely big enough. I'm going to get a little closer here so you can see what I'm up to here. So here's my problem, right? So there's the part, there's the, the drill bit. Um, I think I have to get even closer, which is like crazy close. Sorry about the movement of the camera here, but there, there's the problem there. So so that drill bit has got to be just a bit smaller than the pivot or the shaft that I have so I can re-pivot this, right? And again, I don't, I, I've got to now measure, well, what kind of, what size pivot do I actually need? So, so the first thing I need to do is maybe is drill this hole because regardless of what size, this is the smallest hole I can possibly drill. So, so I've got to do this and get deep and dirty on this thing so if you look at that this is barely big enough to stay inside that shaft yeah this is like barely big enough so I might be able to drill the hole with this one here but it's got to be I got to do it ever so carefully so and see if I can center it so there you go so that's that's that so first thing I'm going to do is set up my lathe and get this all set up to drill that hole. So like I said before, I need to taper this part, right? And I want to basically use the same same distance I had on this one here, this drill bit, because it worked. Uh, I need to trim my fingernails, don't I? You only know that when you're doing this. And this is kind of just inside of where the band is on on this. So I figure if I if I can cut just inside this blue line right so make a blue line on the uh, part go down into my frankenberger frankenstein lab and cut this part inside of that so i can taper this to fit into the uh, thingamajobby doohickey that i have for use, using drilling so i can see if i can just very carefully tap tap this ring up and out of the way right i'm not sure if this will work so i'm just gonna 
tap on the end here. Let's move this camera up and hopefully this moves um, and I can tap this. So I have it over the edge because I want it to be like that. So it is tappable, which is nice. So pull that out carefully. I don't believe I can just grab this and pull it off, but um, maybe I can put it in my staking set and keep on tapping, to tap it down, but I don't want to, to uh, ruin this somehow. So it's all this tricky stuff I'm doing, man, today. So what do I do here? Let me just uh, s maybe stick a chunk of Rodico on the end, or just keep on tapping. If I tap it down to right until it gives, and I use a stake to tap, right, then I might have a solution. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, tell you, tell you, Bernie Mac, Bernie Mac don't like kids. Bernie Mac don't like kids. Get my stake and set out here, and I can get that down a little further this way by using a stake to tap it, right? And but I got to stop because I don't want it to fall down and break the break the end. Even though I got more drill bits, so. that's pretty close to the end there. A little bit more, maybe. I gotta pull it straight out too because if I don't pull it straight out, it's gonna cause me another issue. So, gee whiz, this thing is not gonna move unless I tap it, is it? Oh, there we go, done. So I got this thing out. There we go. And now when I measure this and I draw my line, let me just measure this properly, right? There I go. There and there's my line there. So I need to move that in a bit. And I'll just arbitrarily draw it because I want to go down into the Franken lab and set this up properly. So there it is there, like that. Um, and it's got to be around there. So I'll just make a mark here. There we go. It's on the inside. So I'll cut right in the middle of that fat mark there and I'm good to go. Alrighty. Alright, there we go. That's... Uh, Cut, cut down, not filed in the back yet, but cut down. Now, as you can see, I need to put a taper in there because this will not fit into here without the taper. So I need a similar taper, um, and I need a taper to probably start around the same place. So if I mark the where the taper will start, it's kind of that is kind of where the collet needs to grab onto this drill bit. So. Start the taper right about there, and that will. Uh, so I got to grab this with a collet. So to do this, you got your set of collets, and you pick something that might be close, like a 29 or something, and then fit that in. Say, okay, not good enough. And then I'm going to go to a 30, 33. See if a 33 works, and if it's yeah, so 33 is too big, which is great. I'm bracketing right now. Go to 31, which is too small. So this 32 should be the right call it. Put that in there. And yeah, that's the right call it there. So now I gotta take this and chuck it up and use a Dremel tool to carve off the material so I've got the taper I was talking about before. Now I do call that basement work, okay? So I'm gonna go into the basement and do that because it's pretty sparky and messy. All right, that's my first shot at the taper. I think I may have taken too much of a taper there, but that's not too bad. But just in case, I'm gonna do another one, another pinky. That's the collet we'll be using for this, and just chuck this up on the lathe. Um, I just leave the part in there for now, what the hell. 
and I'll just turn that until it sits nicely there we go and then turn the spindle and then grab this baby it's right around there so you want to grab it with the mouth you want to basically grab it basically right where that right where the um right where the gears end right there so you want to push that in like this and just have it lined up like that so right at the base of the pinion and that's your best chance of getting it right and just turn this a little bit and then turn this a little bit more and then tighten that I don't want to crush it so I just have to tighten it enough to hold it and then when I spin that that should spin true and we'll see because I need to center this first before I start drilling, which means likely I need to file it. And I'll just get down dirty and get down and dirty and see if I have to file that or whether I have to center it using this, right? So because I need to take I need to take the material off, so I need to uh, basically flatten the end of this like that. I did this last time I did this. I just basically uh, say the word basically a lot today. But just put that in like that and then put that in like that and then get myself a uh, one of my gravers that's super tight. So now I want to face this off. So I got to get my other goggles on because you ain't going to face it off properly not without getting in super duper close, right? So. And I'll just close my other eye like a pirate so I just so I can so I'm not worried about that. So let me see. I get the right height here. Eh, it's almost the right height. And I really don't know the size of the pivot I need yet, so Actually, that took the material off pretty easy so I'm gonna use a little Rodico here to clean the end off and then have a really close look at that because that took it off super easy um, normally this shouldn't be maybe I got my no no I've uh... looks like I've got myself a center for drilling so just going to get in a little close here to see if you can see this. There we go. So that's it there. And then I've taken the... Uh, I need to point at this the same time I'm looking at it, which is super hard. Stupid glasses are in the way. But anyway, that's right there is where I've, I've faced it off. And then I used my, my graver here, this one here. And I found center on the graver. So that's good. And now I've got to set everything up for the uh, drilling. All right, the first thing I did with this little part here is I just take my drill bit. I'm not going to do it again, but I make sure it goes through the hole here, which is the perfect size. And I had to go four over to do that, right? One, two, three, four. Whereas before the drill was way over here. So, so that's four over. So then I've got to align this, which means I got to loosen that up. And I've got to make sure it's aligned to be four over, which means I need my pusher in there to make sure the darn thing is aligned properly. The alignment stake, I'll call it. All right, so I had to make a uh, centering bit out of um, brass here because the other one I have, I don't know where it is, it just disappeared, right? So that's the centering bit there. So I just and that's perfectly centered right now. I look, got really close to that and I centered it while holding it, which is probably what you want to do. Um, and then I, after I centered it, I tightened it up nicely. So now it's tight. It's centered. I'll check center again before I start drilling. But, but I've got it in a good shape now, so I can put that in here like that. And I can put the uh, tailstock on very carefully. And I'll move that out of the way but I can flip collets again because that's the collet I had to hold the uh, 
a centering piece of, of copper. Uh, and then I can put this back on and then very carefully put this part back in place. Very carefully. Everything is done very carefully. So this is not an easy job, folks. Not an easy job. So put that in there again like I did last time. And I want to tighten that. Um, tighten that but leave a little bit out because you want that lip to catch. And when I spin that, I want this to be That's not bad. <sighs> Tighten that up again. So now when I bring this close to the uh, part, it should bottom out. So let me tighten this first. So I'm just going to take this like this. The tube is in there. And tighten the top right here. And that will... <sighs> Extra tight, keep that in place from rotating, and then that's gonna that should support the part nicely. And I gotta do that, I gotta actually make sure my lathe bed is secure first and then tighten that because I need to make sure it's close enough and it's dead center with that. Hard. And it doesn't look dead center right now, so I may loosen that up a bit, or maybe it's my just my perspective on this. Cause I don't know, that looks good there. Like that. So, but I want to, first I want to make sure that that bit goes through the hole again like it did last time. So, I've got this part here, and then I've got the bit. And remembering which bit it is, because there's two of them here. One of them is smaller than the other, so I put them beside each other. And that's the one right there, so. And it's got a, I tapered it a bit to fit in, so it should just go like that into the hole. And that taper should hold that bit in place. And then very carefully put that into the uh, tube that I have here. The tube. And then turn that and make sure it gets through the other end. And there it is. Right there. And I've got plenty of room. It won't bottom out. And then I'm going to check, check the bit as it goes through the hole here. Like so. So, I'm going to anchor this first, I think, and then check it. Um, maybe not. I don't know. Because it's tapered, so it's not going to... It's going to want to move around a little bit, so... Let me tighten that here. I don't want to break this bit, because I'm going to have to make another one, so... There we go. So that bit is actually going through the hole. Um, and when I look at it, that ain't lined up with that shaft. I look at it going in there, it seems to be just slightly off. So when I centered it, it basically didn't center properly. So I need to loosen this and then recenter. So I'm going to loosen this up and then recenter it so it's absolutely centered because I think there's an issue there. Take that out carefully. Get my centering jobby doohickey and make sure that the centering thing isn't what's causing the problem. Of course I'm running out of real estate to center this thing so I need to use my hand to push it in and Yeah, that's not, that's, it might be the piece here that's just off slightly, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is loosen this up. So I'm going to just loosen the, 
the tailstock, everything is tight. It's the setup that counts the most, right? And then I gotta loosen this, because that's just part of the setup. Loosen this. And loosey toosey tidy righty or whatever it is. Eh? And maybe what I want to do here is put this back in when it's loose and then butt it up against the part and make sure that thing rotates perfectly, right? That might be the better way of centering it. So it's li live and learn, as they say, right? So that's where it was. So if I do this. that's directly in the center of that part so if I tighten it now that's not bad there so back that off tighten it move it forward and then tighten I want to move this out just a bit and I want to tighten the, the lathe here. That's tight on top, and then the lathe bed, I need to tighten the lathe bed. question is will it drill properly like that that's the question so I'm just gonna put a little bit of um, I'm gonna put this through again and then put a little bit of cutting fluid in there and then see if this will drill properly so put that in there again and now I've got to line it up with this hole and because it's tapered it's tricky to line up so this job is not an easy job I think my dad made a joke about this stuff once. I'm gonna back this off a bit and then use my fingies to put it through the hole. There we go. And then back it about a bit off a bit more and then stuff it through to see if that's aligned at all. I think it's fairly aligned here so it's rotating just a bit but that might not matter all right what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna back this whole unit back off and I'm gonna touch this with a piece of peg wood as it's loosened just ever so slightly to make sure that this is absolutely centered. Because I don't want, maybe I use the, uh, the back of my tweezers. Okay, so this is totally out now. Fix that. Screw that in. And now it's not tight, but it's, ah, geez. Uh, sometimes you get in there with your fingers and F it up. I have to tighten it just a bit and then put a little pressure. Jesus, that's perfect. Now if I tighten it more, is it going to wobble? No, that's perfect. Tighten a little more. Alright, that's a lot better. Let me stop. Alright, now I'm going to come in with the drill bit. And 
I'm going to tighten the, uh, the lathe bed and just see where the drill bit ends up sitting after the lathe bed is tightened. That looks pretty centered. So if I push this right in, then I may have myself a, I got me a, a drill thing. I'm a jobby doohickey. So what I want to do here though, before I start this nonsense, is I want to get a bit of cutting oil in there. So I need to, to get the cutting oil into the inside of that whole part there, which is tricky. So I might be able to do it with the uh, nope toothpick. Nope. Um, I may just use a screwdriver. I don't normally, no, normally do that, but to get in there with the cutting oil uh, carefully, I'm just going to put a bit on the screwdriver like that. And then that should be it should ride down the screwdriver and then onto the blade. There we go. Great. I got the cutting oil on that bit now. And now I gotta tuck it in, see if I can get a closer view of that. Alright, so here's the scary part now. So I'm gonna loosen this up. And then I'm gonna push this whole mechanism towards the uh like that. So that's snug it's snugged in right now, right against that part. And theoretically now, when I push this bit, it's going to start drilling the hole. That's if I don't break that bit first. I think I see a bit of material coming out. So what you need to do then after you see material coming out is you got to stop and then you got to back it off. Like that. And then you got to clean out the material otherwise it's going to make a big mess. It'll get stuck and jam that drill bit, and then you're screwed. All right, so it looks like I got the start of a hole here, which is nice. Um, and then I'm going to actually clean off the tip of that drill bit. Is that clean? Well, it's not too bad. Clean that off. Put a little bit more cutting oil on it. I'm going to use the screwdriver bit I had before to apply the cutting oil. This is like fucking micro work. I think I swore. Hopefully the editors don't nail me there. I said F the F word, but I meant fracking. Fracking. Fracking hard job. I put cutting oil on the part. I just decided to sink my screwdriver into the and now I move this up again, right? And I can move that up again and then tighten that a bit. And tighten that a bit, like that. Gotta make sure that that drill is going into that hole. Though. So what I'll do is tuck that in like I did before, like that, tighten this up, and this, and tighten it up on the top, and then a little bit of praying again.
looks like I got material coming out the back so I'm going to back this off again Let's pull this whole jobby doohickey back again very carefully like that and you can see the drill bit sticking in the hole there so I'm going to move this back again and I want to see how far it's gone. You can see a little bit of material in the drill bit, right? So I can be, I should be able to see how deep this drill bit is going now. I'll just clean this off a little. Get that rotico out of there. So and let me see how deep this has gone. Actually, it's gone pretty friggin' deep. Pretty friggin' deep. That might be good enough right there. I'm just looking at the depth of the hole and making sure that I've got enough pivot room to do that. So I may do a little more. I may regret this. I think I'll go in just a bit more unless that's good enough Jesus it's hard to tell you know what I think that's I think that's deep enough I just don't want to I don't want to screw this up right so I'll spin it again just a little bit may regret this but here we go Put a little bit of oil cutting oil on the drill bit like that cutting oil is all over that hole right now and then I want to snug this up right and we move this back a bit so it's not so far out and then I want to snug this up while it's in the hole like this and make sure that's in there really well like that tighten that tighten the top and just drill a little tiny bit more Alright, that's good enough. I have to back all this off without breaking anything. There. That's good enough. So now, clean that up with Rotico, because I think I may have succeeded here. Deep. Drilling the world's smallest hole here. And now the next thing to do is to... is to look at the pivot size I need so whatever it is it's going to have to I basically need to put a blued steel wire into that hole so so and the way you do that is you you take this out and then you put the wire in and then you start graving it down until it fits the hole so that is the way of doing it but I'll need to wash this part because it's got cutting oil on it and it won't won't work if it's got cutting oil on it later on so and I, I need to find my centering thing because I had to make another one but it turns out the way I centered it worked perfectly so there's the hole and that should be pivotable now so now I've been at this almost two hours so it's a almost two hour job now what I want to do is take this out very carefully um, and I'm very barely touching it when I grab that right so I take that out because I don't need that to be in, in, in there anymore and now I got to find some pivot wire that might be the closest to fitting into that hole um, but before I do that I'm just gonna wash it really quick and I'm gonna wash this in in, in uh, lighter fluid because I want it to evaporate so 
what I do is I get myself a, 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 I'm stuck in an a loop here. Stuck in an a loop. Get myself my bottle cap that I use all the time. Where the hell that is? Oh, there it is. So I get myself a bottle cap like that and put that bottle cap down and then put the part in the bottle cap like that and no pressure again and then grab myself some lighter fluid hold on <laughs> grab myself some lighter fluid and rosin all and make sure you don't smoke or any sparks around this because I don't want to blow up I'll put the lighter fluid into the bottle cap like that that should be enough there and maybe a little more yeah sure I just dropped some on the lathe you don't want that on the lathe motor because when you start the lathe motor that could be bad news right so I'll have to clean that up after so that's the lighter fluid in there and I'll just let that sit for a few minutes because it's neat it's gonna need to to um, clean that part and get the um, and I just spilled some more lighter fluid again folks but it does evaporate super fast and it evaporates without any smell too so I want this part to be completely clean 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 so put it in the lighter fluid let it set for a few minutes and go have a drink of water so there it is there in the lighter fluid spilled on my lathe this will all evaporate in a few seconds no big deal and I'll let that part dry off on some uh, watch paper because the next thing I'm going to do is find some blued steel that I'm going to use for my pivot and I still don't know how close that is to the plate right and I have the very small plate here and I can look at the I got my pin pin gauges and I can pin gauge that plate the outer one here to make sure I've got the right size uh, the right size pivot on there all right now I've got this part sitting here and it's got it's uh, the alcohol is likely dried off of this part but I'll make sure that uh, just in case I'll make sure that I uh, don't worry about that paper going down there make sure that I puff this out nice and lightly just to get any other alcohol that might be in there so I'm just gonna go off to the side here a bit I'm just puffing this out like this and that should dry up any residual alcohol that's on this or I said I'm saying alcohol but it's actually lighter fluid sorry different type of alcohol <laughs> all right that's good enough there and I'm just gonna put this on my mat for a second over here out of the way and I know I dropped my plate but that's no problem here's the plate I got a little jewel setting I found on the floor by the way earlier right there and just throw that into the container and I also found a screw I'll put that in there too whenever I went I went whenever I went down onto the floor because I effed up and I basically basically there's that word again I went onto the floor because I screwed up um, as I broke broke that bit right and I had to recover from that so there it is there so I got myself some I've shown you these before but they're pin gauges so and they're handy as hell so there's the pin gauges so what I'm gonna do is grab like a 0.14 pin gauge and maybe that one maybe this one will fit don't know right so I've got to make sure I've got the right fit for the jewel and when you're putting using the pin gauges for this job I see my broken fingernail I gotta file that out cut it off and just use a pick from now on anyway when you're using a pin gauge for a job um, and it was this pin this one here I have to see how much end shake there is so that fits in there and that's way too that's way I can I can pick a bigger one that's point one four so let's go to point one nine we go way over here and, and I just want to check out what the end shake is when I put this pin gauge in so point one nine fits nicely but I think I can go even higher than that because this is not a pocket watch escapement this is an escapement from 
a carriage clock. All right, so this one is actually too big. So 0.24 doesn't work, so I'm going to go down to 0 0.20. And I want to make sure I've got enough side shake as well. So 0 0.20 seems to work, and I'm going to look at it from the other end to make sure that pin goes through nicely. That's perfect. So the jury's out, so it's 0 0.20 millimeters. That's, that's what I'm looking at for that thing, as you can see, 0 0.20 millimeters. So now I know how many millimeters it needs to be, right? 0 0.20 millimeters. So when I get my, my rod, my steel, uh, to do this job, I'm going to put this over here because it's 0.20, it's 20. I can easily remember that. I need to go find some some material that's close to that, right? So, so again, get out my my material over here, and I know I have some small, very small pieces here that I can chuck up that I've worked with before. Um, but the pivot's pretty small, 0.20 millimeter pivot, which means I've got to shave down this piece of blue steel to that level. So I need to find. A piece of blue steel that I may have used before. It doesn't have to be, it can be like a bigger piece because I'm going to grave that down to the right size. So it doesn't really have to be. If I can find a thinner one, great. Now there's a thinner one right on the edge of my, of all the crap I got in here. So let me grab that and see if that's, the thinner the better. That way I don't have to fart with it, right? There's a really thin one. I think I used this one as a, for a pivot before. There's a really thin piece of blued steel here, so that's it there. Now the question is, um, is it too thin? So I need to, I said 0 0.20, right? So I need to get out my micrometer and make sure I'm not screwing myself. But the best thing to do, I don't even need a micrometer. Let me change my mind here. What I want to do here is take that part and take the end of it and just see how wide that is with respect to the hole that needs to be made, right? So. And I think it's pretty small, so I need to, yeah, that's the smallest piece I got, so it's just a, over the diameter of the shaft, so I do need to, uh, to take some material off of that, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is chuck this baby up, or as they say in the world of drinking, I need to up chuck. That is a joke that I hope you get. As you watch these crazy videos of mine. So I'm going to find the right chuck for this. Now the guy I'm doing this for. His name is John. I'll give you the first name. And he's off to go get a haircut. So i got to make sure I get this crap done. Before he comes back from his haircut. So I have almost an hour to finish this. Which should be enough time. So right now I'm just trying to find the right size chuck. To fit in here. That's not going to cause an issue. So that's, that's a pretty good size there. I'll put that aside. I'll go down one more to a three, and that's way too small. And I'll go up one to a five and see if that's a better fit. These collets and stuff are tricky. There it is there. See if I can put that in. And a little bit too much side shake on that one. So the one I had was this one here. And that's pretty good there. That's a four. So I'm going to push this all the way through and I may not have to uh, <coughs> cut this off. So I just, just do it like that and then blow on it, chuck it up and we might be ready to go. So I just pulled it up the other end. Not smart. Not my first day. Uh, maybe I'll put it on this side. I don't know. Yeah, not sure. I think I'll face it off on that side because this is what I've I've worked on this side before on this, obviously. So now, so now I've got to chuck this baby up and hope that that thing is not so big I can't chuck it up. That would be nasty. 
There we go. I put that in there. There's the slot. I can feel it. I think that's the slot. No, something wrong here. Just keep working it until you get it in there properly. Now, this is weird. This is, it's like the uh, check doesn't want to catch properly. Maybe one of the older chucks or something that just doesn't fit in this lathe. So, because I can do this with a different lathe. Why don't we switch lathes and try that? Because I don't want to ruin the threading on this chuck, right? So, we're just going to switch lathes here. Alright, so we're going to this lathe here. So, i got to get the belts on properly here. And this one's got a counter shaft on it. And this does not have my very cool leather belts because the belts on this lathe seem to have survived. So got to make sure the pin is out on the lathe so as I put this thing together there's a pin that goes in here so you got to make sure that that pin is not even close to the uh, spindle because it'll frig it up and this is a collet holding tailstock I'll move that out of the way now and this is all good so now I got to take this collet and hopefully I can just push that in and there's no issue like the last one um, there we go yeah that's much better so that's going in nicely and I just have to make sure I got enough material on the end for the pivot right and I'll just I'll face I'll be facing this thing off right so I'll just tuck it in like this for now and see if that holds true tighten that up I think this is my favorite lathe. I'm not sure if this is a bully or not, but uh, it's a Lennon actually. It's a Lennon lathe. And that's not John Lennon. That's just that's a different kind of Lennon. So now I need my graver that's hiding. Let me make sure I turn my phone on in case Buddy calls. And I have a call from him and I miss it. I don't want to do that. Of course, if that goes off while I'm trying to do work, it's not going to be good. So let me see if I can get a little bit close to my work here so you can see what I'm doing here. There we go. That's not too bad, I guess. So what I'm doing is I'll face this off first, and I need this to be... Hold your gravers really light so that... Uh, if they break off, you don't have any big problems. So now, I don't want to bend this piece of metal here. So what I'm going to do is use a stone and just take material off of the stone. That way I'm not at risk of bending anything here. So, so grab one of my many stones. I don't have Sharon stone here, by the way. So of all the stones I have, Sharon stone is not one of them. So I just take a stone here and I can just flatten this off on the end like that make sure it's as flat as I can get it right because this piece is going to be my pivot on the end I still don't know how long my pivot needs to be but I think because it's going through the hole it doesn't friggin matter it's as long as it needs to be I think is the, is the answer I just shave that off again, effing up all the focus here. So put that aside. I'm gonna have to do a big cleanup later. And now I want my doozy M gauge, doozy M gauge, because my doozy M gauge could be useful. This is my doozy M gauge, and I could be able to get my 0.2 millimeters on my doozy M gauge. So if I look, if I crunch it on one end, and I see it's at 0.5 millimeters. So that would be where this gauge here is showing it's right about there which is 0.5 so I want to bring this down to right about there right so so I can measure this as I get close and not worry about taking off too much material because this is a redo as well and I'm gonna fit, be fitting that part when I get close so that's how you do that so to make sure my 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 tool rest is close enough
Hey Jill, how you doing? Alright, what I'm doing now is I'm just taking material off it until I'm getting close to 0.2 millimeters. But really, really, what I need to do is make sure it fits the shaft here. So, and it ain't even close. Yeah, it needs to be a lot smaller than that, ladies and germs. A lot smaller than that. So, keep going, as they say. Keep frickin going because I'm going to put this and then press fit it and then make sure it all works I may have to sharpen this engraver too because it looks like it's not taking much material off so I'll take a plate out and sharpen it all right, I'm just removing material from this and there's tons of material to remove so I don't need to bore you with the material removal process, right? I think. I may go to a, a different graver here that I have that's a lot more precise. It's one of the ones I use for, for uh, bounce staffs. And I know I can shave it down nicely with that other graver and not have to worry about pressing too hard or breaking it off or anything like that. So I think I'll go to the the four millimeter graver, four millimeters wide and and it usually does a pretty good job. But what I want to do is is test it this part because this end is a, is the end that's gonna go into the hole that I made earlier. So you don't want to cut it too much. Cut it too much, you got to start over again, right? So, so you want to cut it just enough. It's like a Goldilocks thing. You can clean the part off with your finger there when you do this. So, it's getting closer. Yeah. The other thing I can do is use a stone to to uh, get rid of material. So sometimes I do that, and you can basically use a stone to shave off material until it gets to the right diameter. The stone will work really well but it takes a long time to do it with a stone. So you're better off doing it with a stone when you get closer to the end right now. So it's not closer to the end. If I look at my M gauge, M 12 stands for 12, and I just squeeze that in the M gauge, I look down I'm at four right now, so I've still got lots of way to go. So, so I'm going to switch to a different graver here, and I'm going to go for four flat. Is what I'm going for four flat. So these are the gravers here. I've shown you guys pictures of this before. You can have a look at that. There it is there. So Valarobe, I think they're called Valarobe. Valarobe. There we go. Val Valarobe. Swiss made gravers. So these are really good. They're, um, you can get them from a company in the U.S. that, that is basically an engraving company. I think it's called engravers.com. But so I've marked this with a little marker. It says four flat. So when I when I put that in, I can uh, and I just I'll flip from a, one of my other thingamajobby doohickey thing things to this, and it's a pretty tight fit in these, but. I've been using these for years, so it works. And then now I gotta readjust this because I think it's gonna be way too high. Yeah, I gotta bring that down just a tad, eep, 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 like that. And I may have to bring it back a tad as well, I'm not sure. So um no, it's not too bad there. So I gotta see if this actually works. Yeah, there we go. I like to, they're flat on the tip, but I like to turn them at an angle so they don't get snagged up on the piece of metal. And these ones here are fairly sharp. I don't think I gotta take more material off it, but I may go to my different glasses so I don't, because I want to make sure that I got this perfect. Do 
And there may be no way of showing you this. So I want to get the tip in there first, right? So let me look at my Duzamine gauge. I said it was a doozy M gauge, but it's a Duzamine gauge. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did my gauge go? Where did my doozy M gauge go? There it is. Don't panic there, J Dizzle. There it is there. And I'll measure that again and see how close I'm getting to two. Let's see if I'm getting close to two. And I'm almost at three. But I really don't know how big this hole is. That's the jewel hole I'm looking at the other side. So I'm going to check this out for a second. Well, it's getting close to fitting, but it's not fitting yet. So I think I might stone it. Well, maybe a few more turns. If I fail, i got to start all over again. That's a pain in the butt. So, But it looks like it's wider on the tip here. So i got to get other glasses on because I need to get on these cheapo made in China freaking glasses, but they do the job. They get You can get it really close. And I don't think I'll have any metal flying up at me because it's a... Uh, because it's a Saturday. So, because this is really small crap. So, it looks like I made a little head on this thing. So, I got to get rid of that. Yeah, you can really see up close when you're using these glasses. And I can shave it really nicely with these. And then, when I do that, I just got rid of the little head, head that was on there. Now, when I do a test fit, um, I just want to make sure this gets into the hole, then I'll cut it off and I'll flip it around, I'll glue it in, flip it around. It's getting close, it's getting close folks, it's getting close. I don't know I, where I live right now. I think everybody's dog is coming to my house to fix to uh, make to to repivot things. Don't ever tell anybody you can repivot. You'll end up being the pivot king. I am the Pivot King. I am the Pivot King. Well, we're starting to get a bit of a fit here. It's coming close. It's very close, folks. Very close. I'm hunting wabbits. Hunting wabbits. I'm just going to taper the tip here to get to fit it in first and then I'll move the taper up and flatten it. And you can go from being non-fitting to fitting in like a millisecond if you over, over cut it, right? So it's just patience is what you need. So Man, that is close. So I may, let me just cut a little tiny bit more and then maybe go to the rock. And I'm not talking about Dwayne Johnson. Man, oh man, let me check this out here. Oh, we may have success here. So 
now I've got this pivot in here and you want to be able to it's tapered ever so slightly but you want to tap on the end so what I need to do now it's kind of stuck in here now so just try to spin that out so that's good there now oh, I need to get that down a bit because I don't think this will not fit into this hole and it's this hole here that I want it to fit into so unless it does fit into this hole no it's got to be 0.2 so I'm going to be a smarty pants and I want to what I want to do is cut this away right but I want to I'll, I'll cut it away uh, it's tricky actually because what I want to do is I want to stick that part on tap it on put a little bit of glue on the thing and then cut it away right so but you don't want it to flop around so I might be able to to cut it away here and then chuck it up and then turn it around so if I cut it away chuck it up I can still tap the part on so I'm gonna try that because I don't think the other method I don't like I don't like the other method I want to see how loose this is too when I stick it in because I do not want this thing to be loose. And I know when I put in... Uh, yeah, I think that will work. And if I just turn that around... See, I'm not sure if I can cut this away after I put it in, because I would put it in normally and then cut it away. But if I cut it away and then chuck it up, I may be able to do the exact same thing. So I got to use a, the world's smallest chuck, though. So let me just cut this away, right? Because I know that I know one side is better than the other. So so I'll cut this away and then flip it around. All right, I cut this away, and of course it fell down, but it's right here. Just I reach in with my Rodico and grab this on the world's smallest part. And there it is. So there's the there's the repivot pivot right on the end of that Rodico. It's a pretty dirty Rodico actually. So now what I need to do is find a collet, a collet that's small enough to fit the end of that pivot. So I can call it that up and then tap that on, right? Which would be nice. Um, and so let me look through my collets again. Because I want to tap it on, but then I want to prep the other end. So it's going to be tricky, very tricky. I'm going to get my world's smallest collet, and I'm going to have a look and see what that does. There's the end there. So if I put the smallest collet in there, So I'm going to grab that piece. Not sure. I think that call it's actually too small. It's a one. Let me get a two. I'll feed that into my lathe here. Just turn that around and then see if I can snug that up with a two. Buddy's coming in half an hour an hour, half an hour, so. I'm under great stress to get this thing done. There's the there's the part. So I'm just gonna stick that part into the collet. And then turn that collet and see if that stays. Oh look at that, it stayed. So that's the world's smallest part and the world's smallest collet. So what I want to do now is I'm going to I'm going to see if I can 
push this in just a bit. I'm using my thumbnail here. All right, there we go. So I, I push that in. Now I get to tighten the crap out of it. Because now what I want to do is tap the end of this ever so slightly to make sure that fits. But I'm going to put a piece of, I'm going to put some Loctite on the end there. That Loctite should hold this in place. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. So I get some Loctite and then be right back. Instead of using Loctite, I think I'll use the GS cement, which might even be better. I just put a little tiny bit of a little dab of Duya cement on the end. And then when that dries, that's gonna be so friggin' tight. I think, I think, let me, well, maybe, uh, I don't know. What am I going to do here? Loctite or cement? What do you guys think? Loctite or cement? Cement will stay forever. Loctite, eh, don't know. Let me try cement. Could be a mistake, but I'm going to do it anyway. A little bit of cement on the end. Like that. And that cement will just spread right through everything, right? No problem. That'll dry up a bit. And oh, clean off my needle for the cement. And then push it back in. So that's the cement job. Now I have to take my part like that and jam that baby on, right? Remembering that this is still not at point two, right? So. There we go. Now I'm going to tap the end of that with a hammer ever so slightly just to make sure the part stays on. So I'm going to tap this very lightly here. And actually, it went in pretty deep. I didn't think it would go in that deep, but it did. I'm going to grab it a little bit more from the end and then tap it a bit more. Hopefully it doesn't go any deeper. No, that's it. So it's tapped it, tapped it a bit and so that's in really good. So what I want to do now is chuck this baby up and I got a bunch of collets here and I don't think they're the right ones. So these are way too small, Jerry, way too small. I'm going to get my world of collets out because I want to be able to chuck this up and hopefully remove material without effing up the pivot, right? That is the desire. So I don't know why I talk this way while I'm watchmaking. I should just talk like a normal guy. But we'll see. You guys can criticize on the videos later on. I think I used a 30 or 32. I used a, well let's go to a 27 and see what that does. Too loose. 24. Almost perfect. 23. Still loose. 22. Maybe it was the 22 I used last time. Too tight, too loose. 23 it is, folks. 23 it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we're using a 23. So, there we go. And now, and I put, this thing tapped in pretty deep, which I'm impressed with. I didn't think it was going to go that deep. So, but it did. So, I'm super impressed by that. Now, the thing, the trick now is to is to actually get that pivot to the right size, which is going to be really hard. I think I'll use a stone to do that. I don't know if I want to use a graver because a graver will probably make me, it'll be grave. The results will be grave. But first of all, duzium gauge. I want to see our duzamine duz gauge. Duzamine 12. Duzamine. And look at how close I am. Holy shit. I'm really close. 
really close. So I'm gonna I'm going to Oh that's rotating perfectly. Remembering that that pivot can stick right through that hole, so I'm not too concerned. I want to take a little material off with my graver because there's glue on the end, and I have to turn this sideways now because I got to get closer. This is like tough work, man. So I think if I get paid Tim Horton wages for this job, I'll be happy. <laughs> Tim Horton wages for you guys that are in the United States of America that is the same as Dunkin Donut wages there so I got that chunk of crap out I want to see how close I am so I'm going to take the plate out and now remembering it's the inside one and I want to test this to see how close it is to be to fitting here right because it's a pretty small part so I think the tip fits which is cool because then I can met I can gauge the rest of it by the tip fitting right so if the tip fits Isn't that what, what's his name, OJ said, if the tip fits, you must have quit. Um, I can't remember. I gotta move this a little closer here. It's rotating perfectly though, right? So no issue there at all. I may have to let Buddy come upstairs and watch me work, which I don't wanna do, but he seems like a nice guy. Electrical engineer. God, I love those electrical engineers, eh? I need to fix my fingernails for sure. So I'm going to take some material off right here. I can go use a stone now because I'm sitting so close to the end here. I don't want to F it up. I'm going to tap this in too because I might want to make sure this thing is in good. Watch your spin, baby. Yeah, that's perfect.
Alrighty, I'm not talking a lot, so I'm sorry about that. So I'll try to speed this thing up after, because I'm just not talking a lot, because I'm trying to concentrate on doing this job. So we'll see what happens later. So I want to square this thing off, but I need to take off some material. So. And this file might do it quicker. Especially if I put a little cutting fluid on it. What do you think of that, eh? A little bit of cutting fluid on the file and then we're in business, baby. We are in business. Business. This world's nicest fluid. Cutting fluid. So I'm just going to keep working on this here. You know what, I'm not sure what that cutting fluid will do to the glue I put in there, but let's see how far down I got it here. Le pivot. I think I need to take a little bit off the end of this pivot though. I was working it with the stone, which worked really well for, for shaving it down, so I know I know I know I need to shave it down some more. enough. I'll just take, a, take more material off it, flip the stone around, keep working it. Check that plate again because you don't want it to be, you don't want too much end shake. So, and it's the back one. I know that for a fact. It's getting really close. I can tell. I can tell. Now, is that good enough or what? It's just a fit, do and fit job. So it's the, that pivot there is the right one. So I want to make sure it fits in there. So, but I want to turn it around so it doesn't jam up anywhere. So. So that's almost on right now. I don't want to bend it, so I got to be very careful taking the pivot off. So it's almost on. So I got. I'm going to shave it down a little more here. And I'm going to take a bit more material off it. Somebody's at the door. Not sure if it's my wife or someone else. It's probably someone else.
I'm going to try to fit this plate on now and I'm hoping it works because it's like the last second. So. It was so friggin' close. I want to get just a bit of it on the edge. Just a bit of it on the base. And I want to burnish it a bit now, and that's the smoothing it out. And that, my friends, should do. That is the perfect pivot, and I think I'm right on time. What a mess! I think I jammed it into there. No, that's not right. It was, was it this one? Or this one? I think it was this one. Like that. There we go. So now, if I just sort of reassemble this just a little bit, then I'm going to be in good shape. So I'll take the I'll take this part. I'm going to take a picture of it first because it's so cool. I need to call this guy and ask him how much time I actually have remaining. Because I think I did a good job. I want to put this on here and I want this to dry actually. I'd love this to dry. I'm taking a picture here right now. Where is the part? There it is. That's re-pivoted. Good job, buddy. Good job. So now I'm going to try to just assemble a little bit of this so it's uh, so I don't have an issue later on. So let me get the pallet fork in. Where are my tweezers? Where are my tweezers? I'm missing everything right now because it's a mess. It's a friggin' mess. There are the tweezers. Now, I can't remember where the pal whether the pallet fork went in this way or the other way. I think it went in like this. So I'll just put it in right now. Gotta get closer here. And there we go. I think this guy needs to clean this watch as well. So there's that. And now I want to put the new part in. And it needs to dry. i got to tell him to leave it alone until it dries. I'm just going to throw it in like this. And he can put it back in later. And then I'm going to take the balance and very carefully place it in place or am I? 